Okay, welcome everybody. So today we're going to talk about the costs of production. Uh, this is a pretty simple concept actually. It helps to explain where supply comes from, or at least it, it uh, explains why supplier's supply curve is what it is. So it has to do with those determinants, obviously. But what makes a supplier willing to supply uh, things at a certain price. And this essentially amounts to you know how much it costs to produce something at various output levels. So there's just a few really important definitions here. First, marginal product. We've already learned this word marginal. Uh, marginal product is the change in total product, meaning total product output, from hiring one more worker. Don't be confused uh, in the definition that because it's the marginal product you think it's one extra product. It's not one extra product. It's how many more products you can put out by hiring one more worker. And specialization is one of the reasons that marginal product tends to increase over time. Because when you specialize you can have one of uh, each worker focusing on just one thing. I like to give the analogy of having, uh, like if you owned a restaurant, say it's just like a burger shop. If you have one person who's trying to cut potatoes and fry potatoes, uh, form patties for the hamburgers, uh, cook the patties, assemble the burgers, and run the cash register, it's going to make it really hard for this place to run efficiently. And in fact, that employee is going to spend most of his time just running around, not actually doing stuff. And when you can specialize, uh, the employees can focus more on just accomplishing one thing. This is how an assembly line works, basically. Okay, so increasing returns is a time period when the marginal product keeps going up um, as you add more employees. So here we have marginal product. Again, this is the difference in product. So we hire our first worker, we get three. We hire our second worker, and we get four more. We hire our third worker, we get five more. Notice these numbers just keep going up and up and up. This is at a time of increasing returns. Eventually, these numbers are going to flip. This is when imagine, you know, you have ten people behind the counter at our burger restaurant. They're stumbling over each other. One dude's just kind of hanging out at the cash register and he can't really do anything because there's just not enough space for all the people. So here, our number, our total product is still going up, but suddenly our marginal product is getting lower. So we go from 13 to 11 to 8, etc. So this is diminishing returns. So why don't you try this, uh, this practice uh, just by yourself? You can take out your pen on your tablet and jot the uh, jot the answers in the screen here. Um, and answer the following questions, and then we'll talk about them. Okay, welcome back. So, I just figured out all the marginal products here, and again, it's just the difference, oops, it's just the difference uh, between the total products. Oops, that's four, that's three. Um, so, marginal product of the third worker, we've got five. Marginal product Oh, is this a time of increasing or decreasing returns? Well, we can see that our numbers here are still going up and up and up, so this is a time of increasing returns. What's the marginal product of the seventh worker? Well, it's 11, so our difference here is 11. Is this a time of increasing or decreasing returns? Well, it was 13 before, now it's 11, now it's 9, so this is a time of decreasing returns. The marginal product of the eleventh worker? Well, geez, this time this, this last worker made you even worse. It didn't add any marginal product at all. In fact, it took two away. Um, in terms of production costs, uh, there's two basic types of costs. So the first are fixed costs. These are things that cost the same whether you produce a little bit of output or a lot. So if you're a business, you own the same amount in rent every single month, no matter what you do. You could be closed the whole month, you still own the same amount of rent. Variable costs are different though. These change of output. This could include like worker pay if your workers are hourly, or the amount of things you input, so like the hamburger meat and potatoes at our burger place. The total cost is simply the fixed 
plus the variable costs. And then the marginal cost, again, margins means one more, one less of something. And in this case, we're looking at the margin of how much it costs to produce one more of something. In this class, I'm not going to make you compute marginal costs. Um, it's not too difficult, uh, but here you can see on the chart what the marginal cost of each one is. So it's the amount of cost that we go up. Uh, so here we go from 40 to 70, so it's a difference of 30, divided by 3, which is our product, and that's 10. But again, I won't make you calculate this. Um, so what happens with uh, the marginal cost as you produce more of a good? Well, it goes down, it goes down and down and down, but then at a certain point, it starts to go up again. This is kind of like what it what it's like on the uh, production possibilities curve, um, where as you try to produce more of a good, it gets more difficult to produce more of it. So at this point, when we have seven workers, they're already filling all the spaces, so you're getting less output out of each additional worker. Our marginal product is going down, and uh, our workers are less efficient now. Um, this is a very simple but very important uh, calculation you're going to have to make. Total revenue. It's simply price times quantity. Revenue is just money that you take in. And so it makes a lot of sense that the number of things you sell times the price you sell them for is how much money you get. This is also part of our graph. It's basically the area, if this is our output, you know, say it's 10 and our price is $1, it's the area here, which in this case is 10. The marginal revenue, again, one more of something, it's the revenue you get from one more unit. The profit is going to be the total revenue, everything that you bring in, minus the total cost, everything that you spend. This sounds like an idiotically simple vocab word, but profit maximizing output is an important vocab word. Because if you're a business producer, you have to, you, you, your basic goal is to make profit, of course, and so you want to set production to maximize that profit. And maximizing profit is always where the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue, meaning the cost it takes to produce one more of something is the same as the amount extra that you bring in for that good. At that point, you're going to just be evening out, and if you try to put out more output, it's going to cost you more per unit, and you're going to make less money off of it. And that's it.